Hello everybody, today we will be going over a statistics problem at the IB Math AI SL level. So here we have eight houses in a street that are inhabited by different numbers of people as shown in the table below. So in house A we have five people living inside of it, in house D we have six people living inside of it. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So for the following statements, we need to refer to number of head that is referred to the number of heaven tents per house, write down true or false for each of these. So the first one is mean, all right? Now I can show you how, how to get mean manually, but I want you to get into the habit that anytime you have a table that looks anything like this, dude, just pop it into your calculator, especially because it's gonna be helpful, do helpful down the line with things like standard deviation and interquartile range. So I open up my calculator, I go to stat, which is right here below delete, I press edit and I make sure that all my numbers are inputted into one of the lists. I did this beforehand and then I go to stat and calculate. All right, calculate specifically one var stats. Why one var? Because one var stands for one variable and here we only have like one list thingy, one variable. All right, you get the idea. So list all one, no frequently list in this case, calculate. And I get this menu here. And so this menu more than anything, um, you have to understand like what it's saying, right? And so this symbol here, one of the things you just kind of have to memorize is actually the mean. And so the mean, according to our calculator is 4.875. And so the mean is five. Is this true or false? This is clear clearly false because our num the number that we got was different, right? It's close, but it's still different. So it counts as false. Later on, we have that the range is four. What is the range? The range, as its name dictates, is the maximum value minus the minimum value. And so in this case, we can do it even looking at our table here. Our biggest value is what? Our biggest value is 7. Our smallest value is what? Our smallest value is 3. So we go ahead and take 7 minus 3. Bada bim bada boom, we get 4. Our range is 4. Is this true? It is true. So part one is false, part two is true. Then we have that the mode is six. What the heck is the mode? What well, the mode is, <coughs> as its name dictates, the most of something. And so it's the number that shows up the most. So once again, looking at our table here, we go one by one, right? So we look at five. Do I have any other five? No, I don't. So it's probably not this one. So I'm going to go ahead and cross it out right away. Four is next in line. Do I have any other fours? I have this one and this one. Whoops. And so green, or in this case four, is a good competition. Who knows? Let's keep observing. Seven. Are there any other sevens? No, not really. So I'm going to cross it out. Six. Any other sixes? There's one other. So, you know, it's not three, but we'll keep it in mind. And for three... There's only one, so I'm gonna cross it out. So I end up comparing greens with blacks, four with sixes, there are more greens, there are more fours. So my mode is going to be my green ones, right? Cause there's three of them. And the mode is six would be false. The mode is four. Notice that when I say the mode is four, it makes reference to which data. It's not that there's six sixes, it's that the number that is repeated the most is six. So the, the number that is repeated the most here is four. So my mode is four, right? All right, now we need the standard deviation being correct to 1.4 in respect to two significant figures. So standard deviation is somewhere here, right? Again, one of those things you just kind of have to memorize, much how mean is this symbol here? Standard deviation is this symbol here. So I look at my calculator, I have 1.2. 686, 686, and a couple more, see? All right, so significant figures, I might make a video on this some other time, but essentially, if I have two significant figures, well, I have to count two. So here's one, here's another, and I compare it to the third, see? That's always an important step. Uh, these are my two significant figures, I compare it to the third, and because my third is greater than five, right? It's a six, it's greater than five, that means I need to round up, right? 
So this to two significant figures would be 1.3. And so the standard deviation is 1.4, correct to two significant figures would be false. It is not 1.4, it is actually 1.3. Now we can calculate the interquartile range for the number of inhabitants per house. What the hell is the interquartile range? The interquartile range is in your formula booklet. So if you happen to forget it, you can always remind yourself there. In your formal booklet, we have Q3 minus Q1 is your interquartile range. All right, so the swift way, the quick way to do this is scrolling down, right? In your menu, you can scroll down, there's more information. And looking at Q1, looking at Q3, we go ahead and plug in, we have six minus four. My IQR is gonna be two. Yes, that's literally it. Now, what is the interquartile range? And what is standard deviation too? So standard deviation is basically spread, right? That is the intuition, the, the buzzword we're gonna use. Standard deviation is essentially spread. And the IQR interacts with Q3 and Q1, right? And to further understand this, Q3 is my 75th percentile, which is a fancy way to say the 75% of my data, right? Or like my data numbered 75%. And my data number 25% is going to be my Q1, which you probably guessed it, is the 25th percentile. This is more apparent on a box and whisker plot, which will probably show up in another video. So for now, I don't really wanna dig into it too much, but that is the intuition that I want you to have for now. So in a box and whisker, you have Q1, Q2, which is median, Q3, and the max, okay? And so your IQR would be Q3 minus Q1, which is kind of like this, okay? All right, anyway, that is the statistics problem for today.